Hey guys, welcome to episode 24 of the Tea in Tokyo podcast. My name is Somia. And I'm Ellie. And what did we do this week? So this week we underwent some certification for our jobs. We found an awesome new sushi place and we also talk a bit about some of the vegetarian food places we've found in Tokyo. Yep, that's coming up right now. Yeah, man, so we had a bit of an up and down time this week. We did a couple of fun things, but we also had to do this test at work, which is a requirement in order to get the next contract. Yeah, so halfway through, it's not even halfway, it's like a third of the way through you do one level of certification and then two thirds of the way through you do another one. But because of coronavirus, everything kind of got screwed up at our one, so... We actually already have our next contract. We are guaranteed work until January next year, but we still need to do these tests anyway for our next, next contract. So like normally when you start with our company, you'll have like this test date is pre-assigned based on when you started. But because like Slimmy said, because of coronavirus, we have got like special extensions. So technically we now have until November to do them, which I think they gave to like most of the people in the company who were in our situation. Yeah, so if you're going to be teaching English in Japan, you're probably going to have to do an assessment like this as well, just so they know that, um, you know, you're doing okay at the job and the job's like right for you kind of thing. So the passing grade was 70%, which is actually pretty high. And from what I've seen, a lot of people had failed this test. Yeah, we were super worried because, for example, in my, like my studio, three people who have done it who started around the same time as me but managed to get theirs done first. Out of three of them, two of them failed multiple times, and one of them passed with like 72% kind of thing. Yeah, and I know heaps of people at my work that failed as well. And in fact, the people that we were doing our test with, two of them said that they had failed before, and one of them, his manager, had failed. So yeah, I was really nervous going into it, because I was like, oh shit, Like, what if I fail this? You know? And it's like, even though obviously they allow you to retake it, because I think what happens is if you fail the first time, there's like four tests in the day. And if you fail them, you can retake either specific ones or all of it. And then if you fail again, you have to redo the full day of training. And so even though I'm aware they allow you to redo it as many times as you need, there's still like that, just like that fear of like failing something academic for both of us, right? Yeah, it's like, we're not at uni anymore, you know? I don't want to do tests anymore. And also, I think it's because I had those negative evaluations beforehand, and I was like, oh, goddammit, you know, what if I fail this? Then I'm going to look like a dumbass. So we did the tests, you do them during the day, and they're not, it's not like a long, like, you know, one-hour test like you have at uni. It's like short 15-minute. Which I would rather they split it up. Instead of doing 15 minutes to do four separate tests split it throughout the day, I'd much rather have, like, a longer time at the end of the day. Because for, like two of them I finished a bit early and for two of them I was like panicking to get all of the questions finished like I would much rather have had the full time so that I could allocate my own time you know what I mean yeah although I kind of liked um I kind of liked the format because in the first one I did so bad and then because I kind of knew what it was about it made the rest of it easier for me yeah um so yeah so the way the test worked was it was they gave us like a like a a case case study. study yeah and um yeah like this student is having you know trouble with this like how would you help them blah 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 using the teaching technique we've just gone over the last two hours like give specific examples of how you would utilize this technique what i hate about myself is i do this in every single test (laughs) and i did it for when we first came here our like initial um test that we had to do I did it for that too. I always overthink every single question. So he the question does. will he be, really the question is really straightforward. It's like, um, they give you information about the client and then they are, then they tell you, okay, how would you help the client, uh, or, you know, the, the student depending on this information. So like, how would you customize and, your lesson for this student? Yeah. And I'll like overthink it and I'll think, oh, you know, they, they gave us the information, but they don't actually want us to use the yeah. information because that's like too simple, you know? 
So therefore, I have to be smarter than that, and I have to figure out the answer from something like, you know, read, like, between the lines. And it's, and you don't have to read between the lines at all. You just have to read the lines. Yeah. So in the first one, I did that, and I didn't talk about, like, the information that they gave us at all. And I was like, man, that was stupid. <laughs> and to be fair, I could have done the same thing, but I was almost, like, I was quite lucky in that that your seating is pre-arranged and I was seated next to the guy who had failed before so he actually like told me before the test he was like now make sure you give examples based on the case study they've given you yeah so he said that to me like before the test and so it was like I don't know if that counts as like cheating because he didn't know exactly what the case study was going to be he didn't tell me any specific details but he did tell me like make sure you give examples from the case study so I mean like I probably would have already done that I think yeah, and but, I think the teacher would have told you that anyway if you had asked a question about it. So, yeah, yeah. I don't think that was too cheating. Yeah, the instructor, I think he was like a new instructor. I got the impression that he hasn't been instructing very long. And I think that it's almost like that was a good thing because he like could remember his own thoughts from having taken the courses himself because he did it recently yeah. enough. So it meant that he was able to like understand where, like what we needed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so by the end of that, I definitely thought I'd failed. I even asked the teacher, I was like, so if I fail, when can I redo the test? And I was convinced I was going to because so many other people had failed. But then yesterday night, we actually got our results back. So the passing grade was 70. I got 72. So Oh, I wow. I didn't realize it was 72. Yeah. Oh, so you got the same as the other guy I know who just passed. So nice. Was, it worked out. What'd you get? I got 97%. You know, no big deal. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> To be fair, though, in that situation, but like having marked exams before, I think that seriously like helps me learn how to give the answers that a marker wants. Mm, because true. like the marker generally has like some basic guideline of the type of answers they need, or like not even the exact answer. They might have an example, but then they also have like this is the information that needs to be in the exam in the answer. Like real basic thing. Like it will be like have they brought in one thing from the case study? That's a point. Have they given one example from the learning theory? That's another point. Right. And so, like, now that I've marked exams in the past, I can... It's kind of taught me how to answer basic short answer or, like, medium length answer questions like that. Honestly, I wish that I'd known for my whole undergrad degree, like, the ty- like how to give the right answers, you know? Because mm. I didn't know that. I learned that from teaching in postgrad. And then when I taught my students at university, I was like, oh my god, if only someone had told me that this is what the marking schedule looks like. Because I think the thing is, it's like, so many students have the knowledge there, but if you don't guide them into putting the knowledge where you want it, they're not going to get the points. Yeah, because there's too much information. And it's like, they could do what you do, where they overthink it. So if you just give them straight up which parts you need, without like giving away what the answer is, because unless they have the knowledge, they can't give it to you. So I think it's kind of, it always annoyed me when, like, for example, when I was an undergrad, when, like, teachers or, like, I don't know, people who wrote the exams would be sneaky about it. Because it's like, what does that achieve? Like, if the student has the knowledge there, if they've paid attention, if they've studied, like, being sneaky and trying to, like, trick them doesn't actually, like, get anything out of it. Like, it doesn't demonstrate their, like, lack of knowledge. I don't know. So I thought... I was, like, pleasantly surprised with how this training was, like, run. And I don't know if they're all like that, because it sounds like previous ones have not been run like that, and maybe they've actually finally been like, okay, everyone's failing. Clearly it's not the student's fault. Well, like, in our case, we're the teachers. It's not their fault. Clearly there's something either wrong with the test or the way they're marking it or the way they're presenting it. Yeah. So I think they worked on that. I'm happy with how the test went, and we don't need to worry about the next one until September 5th, I think. Yeah. And I think it's, like, pretty much similar to what we did in this one. Apparently the second one's really easy, but we'll find out in September. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was kind of the lame, stressy thing that we had to do this week. But then we went to a sushi place. We were going to go to Tokyo Tower, and then on the way there we wanted some food, so we looked up, like, a random sushi spot. No, not even there. Remember, it was really sad. I was so excited because all day I'd been craving couscous. And then I found a restaurant near Tokyo Tower and it was called like, it was like, what was it called? Like something couscous. Like couscous was in the name and I was yeah. like, and it was a vegetarian restaurant. I was like, oh my God, this is a sign. I literally mentioned to Somi that I wanted to go buy couscous that day and then I looked it up and found that place and I was like, oh my God. And we walked there and it was closed, which was annoying. So we wandered for a bit longer and then we found a sushi place. The place was called um, Itami, Itame Sushi. Itame. 
which is like it's like almost like a franchise place there's apparently five of them in tokyo but we didn't know that and uh yeah man like right right from the beginning we saw that it had vegetarian avocado sushi which so most places do not have if you go to another we've been to a few sushi places now and all of them the only vegetarian options you really have is egg and that depends on if you're a vegetarian who eats egg as well so that may not even be an option for you yeah and then actually in, in one of them there was like um eggplant and things like that but there yes, wasn't really like, a whole lot the only one you're choice. really like guaranteed not even necessarily guaranteed is like a cucumber sushi roll oh yeah that's which true. is Good literally just cucumber. like rice with cucumber like there's like the, it is what it is like there's yeah. no like avocado or like anything it's pretty common know. for ellie to get like two plates you know like a ton of um cucumber, cucumber like some you'll get like this whole array of different like i don't know types of fish yeah and then i'll get just like a whole lot of cucumber which you know what honestly i don't mind because at least there's an option um, but, but yeah this place man i can honestly say that this was the best food that we've had in japan so far and especially so for me, because like Somi said, they had actual legitimate, veg- it was said on the menu, vegetarian sushi rolls, and they had like a little vegetarian sticker because they had a whole bunch of vegetarian types of sushi, which was yeah. so cool. We both got like vegetarian stuff. I also got uh, like sashimi, salmon sashimi, which was so good. Mm. Uh, it was so fresh. Like when I was eating that, I was thinking, man, like I, I wouldn't be surprised if that salmon was live at the, at the back <laughs> and then they just cut it out just then. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> It made me think, like, man, bears actually have it pretty good, you know? Imagine just eating that in the wild. Like, they're eating some fresh stuff. <laughs> Compared to, like, a lion that has to eat, like, a gross, like, buffalo. You know, bears have it pretty good. Some of you, you're literally uh, <laughs> gollum right now. You know, you just want to eat the raw fish. Yeah. But, yeah, this place I got... So I got the vegetarian sushi rolls, and we also obviously got our egg uh, dish. And then they also had... It was a vegetarian like sashimi wrap style thing where it's like they bring it out and you get to wrap it yourself which yeah so it's like cool. a burrito but with sushi with like a nori wrap yeah it was pretty cool and then i had a it was like young spring onion or something yeah on like as instead of the fish on a sashimi it was like spring onion and that was pretty good mm. um and we were the only people were eating in it was like it had five tables there was a few people who came in and picked up takeaway because it was really rainy so maybe people just weren't going out that was kind of nice to be like we had like the whole restaurant to ourselves yeah that was good and then at the beginning because we like this is something that i don't understand right so they gave us like this entree which i have no idea what it was but i'm pretty sure it was like oyster or like mussels or something. i think it was mussels actually what it was yeah it was definitely some sort of meat thing Meaty they gave shellfish. it yeah they gave it to uh, both ellie and i and obviously i had you know both of them it was delicious it was so goddamn good but we um, realized later on that it's a compulsory like if you order an alcoholic drink they charge you extra and then they like provide you with the dish to make up for it i don't really get it i I have no idea why they do that so yeah it's said that if you order alcohol then you have to also buy that for 300 yen each but to me it's that's so like counterproductive is shouldn't it be like if you don't order alcohol you have to have that so that they can make up the price like because yeah we've had the same thing before eh? we've come across this before yeah like why would you have to pay extra if you're paying more maybe it's so that maybe they're not allowed to only serve alcohol or something so it's something where if people are only ordering alcohol oh true maybe also serve them food at some point yeah, maybe it's that. Like, maybe they have to get a special bar certification if they ever serve just alcohol. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, that was kind of weird, and we didn't realize until afterwards. And it's annoying because it's like a meat dish. Yeah. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, at the beginning, we definitely thought it was free, so I was like, oh, D, so like, you get something free here. What a, you know, what a great restaurant already. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was okay because it was so good. And, like, whatever, really. Yeah. I mean, it was just like a 300 yen charge. Yeah, for like yeah. ordering alcohol yeah who cares that much yeah especially when the food's that good we got um and i also got california roll which is my favorite Sammy loves california roll. um yeah it's my favorite like sushi and actually i haven't actually had it here because like there's so many other options in, in yeah. japan so i haven't bothered to get it yeah but yeah it was really good here and yeah just just the whole thing just 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 the fact that they can get you know just perfect vegetarian sushi yeah it was I think it was, honestly, I was so excited to have, like, a proper vegetarian sushi option. Yeah. Because vegetarian sushi obviously isn't really a real thing. I feel like it's not real Japanese sushi, but, you know, if you go to a sushi place in New Zealand or, like, a Japanese restaurant in New Zealand, there's always going to be a vegetarian sushi roll that has, like, 
more than cucumber inside of it. Mm. We have cucumber, carrot, capsicum, avocado, you know, like a mix of things, which you know satisfies you and fills you up. So this was pretty exciting. And it was genuinely very good. Like, it was good quality. And the portion sizes were really big as well. Yeah. Now, those were some... Because ma- um, what we had learned before we came to Japan was, like, to be polite, you have to have the entire sushi in one bite. Like, you're not meant to you know take a bite out of it you have mm. to pop, plop the whole thing in your mouth man for this one we struggled oh i couldn't <laughs> put it all in my mouth like there's literally no way i could have so i was having to awkwardly eat half of it and you know just fall apart because you're taking a bite yeah and the first one i didn't as well like i i just took a bite out of it but then after that i was like you know what i'm gonna eat it properly so <laughs> had to put the whole thing in my mouth because normally sushi massive. rolls here are very tiny yeah so this yeah, must have true. been like a westernized branch or brand but you know what don't even care <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. It's so, n- it's not a place that you can go all the time though, because it was pretty expensive. Like for both of us, we spent six thousand yen, whereas but, but normally we got a drink each. We got like, multiple dishes each. Yeah, but the exact uh, um like the sushi place by our, by our house yeah. for both of us with that much food, it would cost three thousand yeah. yen. Yeah, but I mean that's a far. That's like a cheap and cheerful service place. So they have so many seats in there. This place only had five tables. Like. Yeah, true. But yeah, man, so happy we went there. Yeah, what honestly, a great choice. We're gonna go back. Yeah, and also we can kind of go back because it's right next to Tokyo Tower, and we really want to go to Tokyo Tower again because I've been there twice now, and that was the first time Ellie went. Um, but we still haven't actually been to the top of it yet. Like we we're just walking around. Because so we weren't sure. We were considering going to the top of it, top of it this time, but. The problem is it was super rainy, which was good because it meant the whole area was very empty. But I was also worried that you'd go to the top of it and then you wouldn't even be able to like see anything after spending all that money. It made me realise, and I guess it's also because um, because of all the travel restrictions, obviously there aren't tourists here anyway. Mm. But also when it's raining, yeah, there's nobody out. So, for example, we went to yeah we went to Tokyo Tower and then just before that we went to Joji, Zojoji Ta- um, Temple. Mm. Uh, which is like a really famous temple right next to it. And the first time I went there, it was pretty packed. Mm. Um, this time there was nobody there because it was raining. Well, and the, I realized... We couldn't tell if we were breaking in because there was barricades at the entrance. But then we saw another couple like just go down the side of the barricades. So we just followed. Because Sonia thinks the barricades were just blocking cars from going in. But I don't know. I'm still pretty suspicious of how empty that temple was. Yeah, no. Nah, it definitely wasn't barricades because it was exactly like that last time I went as well. And also... You know, because it's so humid here, it's so warm, even yeah. uh, even when it's raining. So it's really, you know, as long as you have, like, an umbrella, like, it doesn't really matter that it's raining. Mm. So, yeah, I think we'll try to go out more, <laughs> like, during the rainy season. Yeah, I mean, because that was, it was, when we say empty, it was literally, I think we saw me posted a photo on Instagram. There was occasionally one or two other people walking through past. Yeah. But compared to other temples where it's so packed, you're like, walking in a big crowd of people constantly this was like pretty ridiculous Mm. like the temple itself was closed as well though you couldn't go in or anything so but there was it was nighttime so yeah i think that was nighttime and also just because they're probably still concerned about coronavirus maybe yeah yeah but so that was a pretty cool experience just getting to go to such a popular temple with no one else there yeah i mean you could actually take time taking photos Mm. you don't have to worry about getting in people's way you know, anyone being behind you or anything like that. Yeah, or looking like a dick taking ages while you pose for your pictures. That's yeah. always my fear, is especially when it's busy and you've got a really good photo spot. You don't want to be that person who takes forever and then everyone has to wait for you. But this way, like, we could get photos, like, for example, of me standing, like, right in the middle of the steps in front of the temple. And some you could stand really far away to get a photo where you can see the full temple. And it wasn't like I was rudely holding up the really good photo spot. Yeah. And um, speaking of, like, you mentioned that photo that I posted on Instagram. If I'm honest, there, I did actually Photoshop that photo <gasps> a little bit. So, yeah. so there was one person walking down the stairs on the side. Man, I did not who, notice that. I know, because I Photoshopped it out. <laughs> yeah, but isn't you Photoshopped it so well? I didn't notice yeah, it. Yeah, so if, you know, whoever can uh, figure out what part of that photo I Photoshopped wins. Oh, I'm totally going to go look at it later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. The other thing I want to talk about, actually, was uh, to do with, like, the whole vegetarian place we were trying to find. I've been trying to go vegetarian this month, and it has failed in every turn, to the point where even when we were at that sushi place, like I could have totally just gotten uh, vegetarian stuff, and I was like, eh, screw it, but I've already failed. do you know failed. why Somya has failed? It's because, and he does this a lot of the time with his goals, this is a Somya problem, and I think anyone who's ever watched Gina Marbles on YouTube will have heard of the too much gene, it's when you just do too much at once. 
You just can't help it. You just do too much all the time. And Somya gave himself so many dietary restrictions this month. Their vegetarian was just like one amongst them all. And it's impossible to just make that big of a change at once. For at least for someone like like people like us. Some people there might be fine. For us, it's not doable. It's why I didn't go vegan straight away. Because I know myself and I know that such a big change is going to be too difficult. And like me as a person will just give up entirely. So Samia was like, I'm going to cut out all meat. I'm going to cut out all like bread, all carbohydrates, all milk, all like unhealthy food. And he literally instantly failed. Yeah, man. In Japan, it's really hard to do that here. So... The first time was when I was at work and I thought, because Ellie always gets uh, egg sandwiches, like, you know, I'm which is so vegetarian. I'm so sick of Yeah, you're always complaining about those. But I thought, okay, cool. That's something I can get that's vegetarian. But then I've been trying to cut out bread because Japan, like, they only have white bread. There's yeah. no such thing as healthy bread here, unless you go to, like, specific bakeries, but even then it's hard. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I can't have that. So I was thinking, what else is vegetarian here? They and have all really the salads, good salads, yeah. All the salads had meat in them, except for one. There was one salad that didn't, but it looked kind of gross, so I was like, okay, screw that. I'm not no, going to no, get no. that. I've gotten that salad before, and it's all good. I didn't like how it looked, eh? So <laughs> I was trying to find something else, and I was walking around the mall, and it's so hard. Any option that is vegetarian will have bread in it, you know? <laughs> Or it'll be unhealthy in another way, because I was like, okay, I am also don't really want to have, like, chocolate and things like that now. Like, sugary treats. Yeah. And everything is either a sugary treat, or it has meat in it, or it has bread in it. So, like, to get rid of all three at the same time is so goddamn hard. Yeah, I think you just push yourself too hard, too much, all yeah. at once. Like, so I either get an egg sandwich, and then I sometimes get veggie sticks with, like, a satay sauce... Or I get that same. So it's kind of cool at Family Mart here. They do salads. And then you can buy the, like, flavouring sauce sachet separately. So you can choose to... You could get the same salad, but then you could, like, mix it up a little bit each time. So I'll get a salad and, like, mix it up with a different flavour sachet. And then I always get, yeah, the veggie sticks with satay sauce. So, like, yeah, I'm very over egg sandwiches. And if you're a vegetarian who doesn't eat eggs, like, that's obviously not an option as well. Because I have been to some family marts and, like, convenience stores that have other vegetarian options, but at the one that's by my work, that's the only option. Yeah, I had a friend tell me that there's a place called... Like, there's a a convenience store here called Lawson's. It's one of the three, like, major uh, convenience stores apart from uh, 7-Eleven and Family Mart. And apparently there's one called Natural Lawson's where they sell more vegetarian options. And there's meant to be one near my work, but I went to look for it and ended up just being a normal Lawson's. Um, So I literally just got, like... A milk tea, yeah. and that was it. And I don't drink milk He's anymore, so it made me feel milk. so yeah. sick. I was like, oh my god, that made me feel like crap. But to be fair, like it would, I guess it would be a lot easier um, to have a good diet if we, you know, made our lunch and did that kind of stuff more. But like we haven't, we haven't actually been uh, to the grocery store and done a proper grocery shop in yeah. probably like two months. We've been pretty not because, two months. That's an exaggeration. Well, it's been it's been at least a week and two, a, a month and two weeks. Because um, we didn't do it at all last month because I had work every single day, so we literally didn't have time. Yeah, so I've just been doing lots of little ones on my own, and then I don't want to carry too much, so... Yeah, it's really hard if you don't go on a proper grocery shop. So we we need to do that soon. We can't do one this week because we're going on holiday next week, so when we get back, maybe we should do a proper one. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, that's pretty much it for um, this week's podcast. So next week, um, we're going to be going to um, Karuizawa and Nagano. Mm. So yeah, we'll have podcasts from there, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Our first podcast from outside of Tokyo. Mm-hmm. So remember to follow us on Instagram at t underscore in underscore Tokyo, and also on Twitter at t in Tokyo. Okay, okay. Bye. bye guys. Bye.